Hi friends, Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade. Today I'm going to talk about how you can use puzzles for phonics and for math. You can pair up all sorts of different puzzles with, for phonics and math. So I have here just a whole ton of uh, Melissa and Doug puzzles because they are my favorite. So these ones here that I'm kind of showing you are the easy, kind of chunky puzzles. As you notice, I don't have any of the pieces in the puzzles because what I do is I keep the puzzles separate from the pieces. So I keep the pieces in plastic bags like this and um, I keep them together that way. My kiddos do not lose the pieces because it drives me crazy if we have any pieces lost. So I keep the um, pieces and plastic bags separate and then when we're ready to use them, I take them out. Uh, otherwise, I keep the puzzles like this with the pieces out of them and they're much easier to store together uh, that way and then all the pieces are stored separately in their containers and it just helps me a lot. So that's my first tip with using puzzles or at least for how to store them. Okay, so I'm going to talk about six ways to use puzzles for math and for uh, phonics. Now, this is the fourth video in my series on six ways to enhance your, ch your students' learning. If you have missed any of my videos, uh, be sure to check my YouTube channel and um, I will try to also leave links below um, to the other videos in the series. Okay, so let's get started with way number one to use puzzles for learning, for math. Okay, so this one's gonna be for using it for math. And what you can do is you can pair it up, pair up a puzzle. Here's, um, here's some uh, Melissa and Doug puzzle set. I'm gonna just pull out one of the uh, puzzles You here. can have them do the first problem on the worksheet. So this worksheet says, this worksheet is from my early learners math curriculum and it's a comparing numbers worksheet. And so they're going to draw um, the comparison symbol. So what the student would do is they would do the very first problem. So the first problem, I'm going to put my symbol in there to compare my two numbers. If they do it correctly, you give them a puzzle piece. And they go ahead and they put it on their um, table. And then they go on. So they're going to do another problem. If they get it correct, then you can give them another puzzle piece. And they're just going to, um, so I would give them another puzzle piece. And they're going to connect it. And they're just gonna keep going and they get rewarded with a puzzle piece every time they do it correctly. You can also do this with flashcards. So you flash the flashcard. If they say it correctly, like six plus five, and if they say 11, then you can go ahead and give them another puzzle piece and you keep on going like that. So it's a reward system. And you keep going until they have earned all of their puzzle pieces and they've put their puzzle together. Okay, the next way, second way to use puzzles, this way is going to be for phonics. So um, I pulled out just a puzzle here. This is just pets and I have a puzzle and then I have all the puzzle pieces separate. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pair it up with um, flashcards, alphabet flashcards. So here I have uh, alphabet, my alphabet sticks. This is a match activity, but I'm gonna use it as, for example, as a flashcard, because that's what we do at home. So here I have the D flashcard. So I would give the child the D flashcard and I would say, find the puzzle piece that starts with D. D, D. And so for this example, there are two that they could find because there are two dogs. So they're gonna find um, the dog, because dog starts with D, and then they can put it on their puzzle once they found the correct one. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna give them another flash card that um, matches one of the animals, and they're gonna go ahead and match it up. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna give them the T this time. I'm gonna say, find the puzzle piece that starts with T, T, T. T and they're gonna look at their little animals here and I see a turtle. If they find the correct one, then they're going to go ahead and put it on their um, puzzle. You could do this with all sorts of different phonics activities. You could have them look okay, for vowel Okay, so sounds. instead of doing beginning sounds, you could do vowel sounds. So if I gave them an O card, I could say find the animal that has the vowel sound ah, ah. And they could look for the dog for that one as well, and they would put that one on their mat. So you could give them obviously an A, and they would look for either cat or rabbit has an A in it. Or give them an I, and maybe they'll find fish. So you could do vowel sounds as well. It just depends on what puzzle you're using and what pieces are with your puzzle. So mix and match um, different puzzles and mix and match your flashcards and try to come up with some fun games. Okay, this next way is to use puzzle pieces for 
basic counting and simple operations like addition and subtraction. So we use these puzzle pieces uh, from this puzzle. This is a Melissa and Doug counting puzzle. Obviously you could just use the pieces on the puzzle learning to count to 20 as it's intended or you can take the pieces out like I have here and then you can match them up with another uh, puzzle and the pieces from another puzzle. So I'm going to grab pieces from a dinosaur puzzle. Can you see that? Okay these pieces are from a dinosaur puzzle and what I would do is I would give the child one of the numbers. This is for a very young child. So here's a number two, and then they have to take the dinosaur pieces and count out two. So they would do one, two, just like that. Then I would give them another number. So here's the number six. So they're gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, six of their dinosaur pieces. Okay, so just something super simple to match up your puzzles and use your numbers in different ways. You could also do it instead of putting it on here on this cookie sheet like I have, you could actually have the puzzle out and then just have them put the pieces in there as they count them. So give them, for example, give them the six and then have them put the pieces in the puzzle up to six and so on. So that way they're also working their fine motor, putting the pieces in the puzzle. Okay, so then to also move on to addition and subtraction, you could do something like this. So you could put out two and then three over here. And then what you could have them do is you would have them use their pieces. So they're gonna do two. And since I have it on a cookie sheet, you can use a dry erase marker and you can write the plus. And you can write the equals because on a cookie sheet, it will wipe right off. It kind of works like a, a dry erase board. So if you have a big dry erase board that you use on um, the floor, this would work as well. Or on a desk, um, if you have a really big one that you could put, it would work on that too. But cookie sheets work just fine. So they would count two plus how many are here. There, there's three, so they're gonna find the number three puzzle piece and they're gonna put that in there. And they're gonna add it together. One, two, three, four, five. So two plus three equals and they're just going to use their little puzzle pieces as manipulatives to show the number sentence. So you can obviously do it with subtraction too because I can give them, you know, let's say I give them all five minus, and you can tell them, okay, take three away or two, take two away. I'm going to take two away. So minus two. Oh, I'm going to use my number two piece. Where did I just put it? Right here. Equals how many are left? three. Okay, so you can do it with addition, subtraction, basic, um, uh, basic operations. Okay, way number four to use puzzles is for simple sorting activities. Math is a good, uh, uh, sorting is a math skill, sorry, and so right here I have grabbed this puzzle. This is a really cute one because um, it has a net here and they get to kind of uh, match the magnet up to pick up the different pieces. So what I would do is I would have the kids practice sorting these bugs. These Some of them are insects, some of them are spiders and things. And I would pick something to sort them by. You could sort them by how many legs, how many, uh, if they're insects, if they're not insects, things like that. So here I have wings and no wings. So what I'm gonna do is I would have the kids go ahead and pick one up. This is a, an ant, so I'm gonna put no wings. And here I pick up a bee and I'm gonna put him on the wings side. And let's see, I have a spider, so no wings. And here I have a caterpillar, no wings. And then here I have um, a beetle. Beetles do have wings, usually, but you can't see them in the picture, so you may have to explain that to little kids. But anyways, you get the idea. So. Find whatever puzzle you have and then just have them sort them by attributes. So if you have um, an animal puzzle, you could have them sort them um, by like mammals or um, reptiles or whatever you have, whatever puzzle you have, have them sort them. Like for example, that, that um, pet puzzle that I had earlier. I could have them sort them by, um, yeah, mammals and mammals, fish, reptiles, stuff like that. So anyways, um, you get the idea. So, so using puzzles for simple sorting activities is fun too. This uh, fifth way to use puzzles 
is to pair them up with activities you already have. This is very easy to do with alphabet puzzles. So here I just have the a chunky alphabet puzzle from Melissa and Doug, and I'm going to pair it up with my word family sort and match activity. You can get this off my website. I'll leave a link below if you're interested. However, what I did is I just pulled out one of the word families and then I pulled out the pictures that match that word family. So what I would have the child do is I would have him make the act word family by getting the pieces. So he's going to put act here, E, T. Then we're going to make each of these words that go with the act family by, by placing a new letter here. So the first picture is wet. So he has to find the puzzle piece and make wet. Then we're going to change it and we're going to make set. So he's going to grab the puzzle piece and he's going to make set. We're going to change it and now he's going to make pet. He's going to grab the puzzle piece and make pet. So really I'm still using this activity but I'm making it more interactive because what this activity is is they just had to sort the puzzle pieces um, under the correct headings and I made it a little bit more interactive where they actually have to make and change the words by using the puzzle. So uh, alphabet puzzles are super great for doing phonics activities, just pairing them up with phonics activities you already have to make them a little bit more interactive where they have to use their hands and they have to build the words. So this is just one example of a million. I, um, I just kind of come up with them on my own. I'll, I'll just grab one of the activities that we have, like I grab this one, and then I just kind of grab my puzzle and I go from there. And I just come up with a way for them to use the puzzle pieces and to be able to manipulate them um, and practice sounds and making words and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, the sixth way to use puzzles for phonics and math is to make a game. So here I made a game. I took the um, number pieces and I only took the big like teen numbers uh, because like for my son who just turned four, we're still working on um, teen numbers. Actually, he was working on them when he was three, but he just turned four. We're still kind of working on them. So what I would do is I took those and then I put uh, a puzzle underneath it. So I uh, have a puzzle here. It's a train puzzle. It's from this set here, Melissa and Doug. It's this. No, it's is it the train? No, it's the fire truck one. So I took the pieces from... Whoop, there we go. I took the pieces from this fire truck puzzle and I hid them underneath the numbers, okay? So then what I would have him do is I would have him choose one. He has to tell me what the number is. So he would say 13 and he's going to put it in front of him. Now let me move this down. He's going to, well, you can't see. Okay. He, he'd pick 13. Then he's going to get to keep the puzzle piece that was underneath it and put it down. Okay, and then we're going to keep on going and he's going to make the puzzle. So then he's going to pick another one. What number is it? 16. Very good. He's going to put the puzzle piece down. What number is this? 19. Okay, he gets the puzzle piece. He's going to put it down. So he's going to try to go ahead and make his puzzle here. I think this goes here. And he's going to go one by one. And then when he's completely finished and he's made his puzzle, you can see that. So he's going to go, he's going to pick, pick one. He's going to say, that's the number 18. And then he gets another piece and he's going to go ahead and put it on his puzzle. When he is finished making, um, goes this way. when he's finished making his entire puzzle, then I'm going to have him take these pieces and he has to put them in order. So then he would take his number pieces and he would just sort them from, you know, smallest to biggest, obviously, in number order. Okay, so that's just another fun way. So he's not only getting to do this and make a puzzle, and he's not only working on saying the number names, but then he has to work on putting them in order. So um, just another way. So you can take your pieces and you can make different games out of it, and it's a lot of fun. So I love to hide uh, pieces underneath pieces and then um, do activities like that. So they use the piece on top, and then they get to take the piece underneath and put it together. So that is six ways to use puzzles for math and phonics. I have so many other ways that we do it, but I had to pare this video down. I feel like all of my six ways videos have to be really pared down to just six ways because there are so many ways to do these activities. Uh, so I hope you really enjoyed this uh, video. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. I will leave links to... Um, if I had any of my like my activities that I have on my website, like this word family activity, I will leave links below to those if you're interested in those. But uh, most of my puzzles, I think all of the puzzles I showed in this video were Melissa and Doug. Uh, I do have other puzzles that are not Melissa and Doug, but I really like the quality of Melissa and Doug puzzles. So 
that is it guys i will see you next time and thanks for watching bye